All right, it looks like we are live. I'm super, super excited about tonight because we have been waiting a long time for you too. With this pandemic and having to wait, and move your show around, I am so thrilled. We finally have a great time for you guys to come. And I am just super impressed with all that you have done, Miss. Dina Hall and Stephen O'Shea is with us today too, doing a documentary. And first, we're going to start off with Athena and Kat. Uh, and you know, there are some people that may not know who you are out there. If you can just give us a little bit about who you are and what you're doing, and um, then we're going to talk about a few of your paintings. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, I want to thank you, Cherie, for making this all possible and getting it set up and the board of directors we really appreciate everything that y'all do for the community all the work that you're doing um with i, saw, I looked at the uh, uh street art and yeah. i noticed that y'all got donation bins up at the the gallery and want to encourage everybody to contribute to that um and just I appreciate everything you do uh, my name is kathina hatla and um I have been in the Brazos Valley for almost 30 years. Oh, wow. um, I am a teacher by profession. I taught at Raver Middle School for 21 years, and I am currently at Core Education School. I've been there, this is my eighth year there, and I teach science, sixth through eighth grade science there. Wow. Um, I paint as a hobby, as um, a creative release um, just to help me get through some of the more challenging, difficult times. I am in a wheelchair. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I became paralyzed um, in 1999 and um, I have been painting to um, show some control over the struggles that I go with to document my journey um, and to find some productive way to express myself. And this is kind of the result of it. It's just my life's journey. So. Well, I, I am, I, you know, whenever you sit in the, in the gallery and you look at each painting that you've done, the way you just described how you, this is your life's journey, I can definitely see that. And I am just blown away how a science teacher can do such amazing work. Not only have you um, shown that through how you express yourself, but how you've grown through all your struggles and pains and what life has dealt you and I, I, the title of your show, Pursuit of Light, like, oh my gosh, like this is so deep on so many levels that if people don't come see your work um, through the season of life that we are in right now, you're missing out on what the light really truly is going to be by the time we get through all of this. You bring hope, you bring Oh my gosh, so much joy. Like some of these paintings I can sit in front of, the brightness. You can tell you're really going through some amazing, charming, delightful times. And then you've also seen where you've had more challenging times. So I can't wait for you to go through some of these paintings and kind of tell us what was kind of happening and what you were thinking as you went through the process. And um, Stephen, I can't wait to hear your side of, of watching through uh, your lens to see how her life has been. So, all right, here you ready for the first the first painting? Sure. Okay, here we go. All right. Do you want me to just talk about it and explain? Yes, please okay. do whatever you feel you need to do. I, I I can't wait to hear this one. Okay, this one is probably one of the my most treasured pieces because I tried to start this in 1999 when I was in the rehab hospital as a patient 
and they were letting me, allowing me to do this as kind of part of my ed occupational therapy. Mm -hmm. um, because when I first um, went to the rehab, I couldn't sit up. They had to Velcro me to the back of the wheelchair. They had a neck brace on me. They had to put a little uh, Velcro band around my one hand that I could use so I could try to brush my teeth or use a fork or something. So my hand was really shaky and had tremors and everything. And I couldn't get the paint mixed right. It was dripping down the painting. I couldn't figure out how to do the brick columns or the stone columns. And so there were just two big white rectangles there with kind of some green in the background and smeared around the front. And I gave up on it. I quit. We, it dried out. We took it home and it sat in my closet oh, for wow. 20 years. Wow. And my daughter, Valerie, got this out and she said, Mom, I, th I think it's time. It's, it's time. She said, you need to come full circle and you need to finish this piece and you need to, you know, get closure on it and get control of it. And so that's what I did. I finished this one last year and it's called Emergence. Mm -hmm. And um, to, me, to some people, it may look like you're entering a path, a garden path, going into a garden area, into the woods. But for me, it's coming out of the woods, so to speak. Um, it's just my journey kind of from the dark shady areas back under the trees and you come back out into the dappled light and, and move on from there. So that was my kind of big accomplishment for last year is to, to complete this and finish it after 20 years. Well, I'm glad your daughter brought it out because I, I definitely believe that is you're definitely going forward. And I, I love how the light uh, hits the front of that and I can, um, I can imagine you were seeing yourself walking through there, huh? Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Steven, don't be shy if you feel like you want to jump in. If you see something and anybody on Facebook, you've got quite a few people that are, are following us. Beth says hello. And Jackie says hello. So y'all just holler uh, at us. If y'all got a question for her, we'll we'll definitely throw it out there. So. Here's, here's another one that I think is so bright and so um, cheerful. So I, I want to hear your side of this one. Well, this is my um, journey into trying abstract work. Um, but everything I do, a lot of things are, well, I've never painted that before. Let me see if I can do that. But <laughs> it's abstract and it's called Beneath the Surface. This was the first painting I painted after I became paral uh, paralyzed. The paint was probably 10 or 15 years old and it was very thick in the tubes. And But I just squeezed it out and put it on there anyway. The, this paint, but it's called Beneath the Surface because during probably five or six years after I became paralyzed, I felt like I was just submerged somewhere or mm. adrift out in space, just in a dark place. And just, I couldn't find my way up or down. And this is like, I'm under the water and looking up towards the surface, towards the light. So that's kind of where I was during that period of time. And this is what happened. No, you were definitely looking for a cheer. I, I like it. I'm glad you swam to the top of that one. <laughs> And this is just gorgeous. Well, thank you. This one also has a special story. Um, about uh, 10 years ago, um, my mother requested that I start this on mission trip down to Belize. And she came back with a bunch of photographs and she kind of picked one or two and she said I would really like for you to paint this for me and again at the time I was still kind of on that uh, edge teetering back and forth between I don't know if I can do this uh, I don't know if I'm 
you know, able to do this. And I started this one as well. But I, and it, I started it with that same old paint. So it had some thick texture to it. But I just barely got a little bit of the background, maybe the horizon, the sky, a little bit of the background. And I lost interest in it or I get, you know, gave up hope on it. I said, I don't know how to do this. I've never painted palm, palm trees before. Um, and this one also remained unfinished for about 10 years oh, wow. and also went into the closet. Um, but, and I may get choked up on this one, but um, back in June, I decided to, you know, just suddenly it, you know, occurred to me that, hey, I'm going to finish this one. And it was on a Wednesday in the middle of June. And I said, I need to finish this because my, my mom and dad really like this painting. And so I jumped right into it and I started working on it and started, you know, seeing if I could get it finished. And this was, as, as I said, I started this on a Wednesday. And um, Sunday, my mom, the Sunday after that, my mom passed away. Sorry. No, I, I, I can see why your mom wanted you to paint it. And I just think it's um, so beautiful that you remember so much about this painting that was set aside for 10 years and that you didn't think that you could do palm trees and your mom knew you could and the light is shining through especially that one on the end there yeah. so it makes me wonder if that one was really special to your mom yeah. i don't know very very it's just a very beautiful painting well, thank you yeah, it's but an incredible. It's called Wish You Were Here. And it was for my mom. I'm oh, sorry, Stephen, I cut you off. No, I was just going to say it's an incredible testament to your mom, Kat. And I think it's a, a beautiful painting. Oh, thank you. And that was this summer, correct? Yes. That was. Going, going, wow. Wow. Just incredible. And then here's another beach, or, or maybe this is in the middle of the ocean. This is kind of in the middle of the ocean. And um, this is a pretty big painting. I think it's 36 inches tall, mm -hmm. um, which is about two feet higher than I can reach. And so this was uh, my problem solving. I had to turn it upside down. To you paint painted it. this upside down. I painted the clouds, the top portion of that top third or half of it upside down. Oh so, um, and I, I was, during the time I was finishing this up, Stephen at the time was sailing around South America in a two man sailboat to, to their goal was to sail around uh, Cape Horn. Um, to bring awareness to veteran suicide. And wow. he had already had some um, episodes. Of, he, he filmed a documentary about that and they already had some episodes up online. And some of the storms that they went through looked like this. I mean, some of them were a lot worse than this, but they definitely, um, this, it, it was part of my inspiration to you know, get this one finished um, it was just watching some of his uh, previous documentaries about their trip. Um, mm. so it's called Wind and Whitecaps, and it's wow. just a massive bank of clouds and um, the waves kind of coming at you. Um, one thing that was interesting about this is my granddaughter Harley came in and she saw it leaning up against the wall, and she was nine at the time, and she just kind of kind of got up real close to that and looked at it. She said, Grandma, how do you make these clouds look like they're moving? And I was like, well, um, I don't know. It's just the way, you, you know, <laughs> I don't know how to explain that. But 
um, that's one of the things I try to show in my paintings is the dynamics of nature, just the ever-changing movement of clouds of water, just the changing of the seasons, the trees. Um, because I mean, as coming from being a science teacher and a nature mm -hmm. person, um, that's just something I, I love. And it's just an outpouring of one of my passions is to show, um, to try and, you know, incorporate the movement into whatever I paint, so. Well, I also think it's interesting that you're talking about movement because Stephen was on this little boat because he was making a movement for veterans. So I, that is, that is pretty cool, Stephen. What would, what else was, was going on during this? <laughs> Well, we were, you know, we were, like Kat said, we were sailing around Cape Horn at the time. And um, I, Taylor Greiger, my other cabin mate and myself were um, probably out of internet range and cell phone range for three months. And wow. when I finally came home um, to my wife, uh, she brought me over to see Kat and her paintings and I hadn't even known that she'd been working on this one. So when I saw it, it just about floored me. And it goes mm -hmm. without saying that it's my absolute favorite. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and Jackie asked us what what was the um Jackie, what was the um what was the movement? Maybe you can give us more on that movement, Stephen, um, about the veteran sure. suicide. Yeah, well, um that's been kind of my calling for most of my adult life. I um spent six to seven years researching a book that just recently was published. It's called From the Land of Genesis. And that's about veterans returning from the Iraq and Afghanistan wars and reassimilating into the civilian world. Um, and then I finished that book probably three years ago. And that's when we began the sailing expedition. Um, and that started because one of my high school friends, Taylor Greiger, uh, he served in the military for six years as a re Navy rescue swimmer. And wow. when he got out, um, he had undiagnosed PTSD. He was really struggling, reassimilating. And uh, we decided to kind of make this journey about uh, calling attention to veteran suicides and the epidemic that's kind of striking our country right now. So uh, we started, uh, that was probably three years ago, finished two years later. And we have a documentary coming out hopefully in early spring. It's called Hell or High Seas. Wow, that's that's pretty much what they go through. That's for sure. And what was cat? What was the name of this painting? Wind and white caps. Wind and white caps. Wow. I bet you were wind burned after that, Stephen. <laughs> mm -mm. What a, what about this one, cat? All right, this one is a painting of a hailstorm out Ooh. in West Texas. And um, I used to live up in several West Texas towns for a portion of my life. And out there on the, the plains, the, when the storm clouds roll in, they are very dark. It almost, it makes the street lights come on sometimes. They are so dark. But the hail, if, the, if it's during the right time of day, it will catch the... Uh, rays of, of sunlight and refract them and they, it, it will refract crack the blue wavelength um like how we get the blue color in our sky or the blue in the ocean yeah. but it will refract the, the blue and it will look really pretty so this is kind of a play on light as well and um underneath it i've tried to portray the Kind of prairie grasses and scrub grasses and things that grow out in the the pastures and things out there and there's a little wood fence running through there um so um this one i, I believe is called light in the storm mm -hmm. um and this was kind of some struggling time i was going through because it's a little turbulent and dark and ominous but um i still think that there's a beauty in the storm and there's beauty after the storm light after the storm so that's kind of what i was trying striving for in this painting wow. i think it's fascinating how you incorporated your science with that and that's probably how you got the perfect shade of blue <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, another beach picture. Yeah. Um, this one is called Refuge. And um, I had seen several pictures of people that had been down to the coast after these are like post thunderstorm clouds that are just catching mm -hmm. the sunset, the rays of the sunset. Um, and I had never painted a boat before. This was every, every picture I paint, I try and have a personal challenge um, for something to overcome and see if I can make it work. And it's just part of my um, problem solving, I guess, the approach that I have to life. Um, but I worked on that little boat trying to get it contoured right and get the reflection right. But, um, and ever since I've painted this one, I've seen actual photographs very similar to these kind of little weird little odd shaped storm clouds mo moving off into the coast over the water. So um, I thought, I said, wow, yeah, I wasn't, I, I thought I did okay there. No, I think it's really cool. I think um, you could also see different shapes in those clouds. Like I could see a turtle, but then uh -oh. if I squint my eyes, then I don't know. I'm like, I like Star Wars. So I can see those little machines back there. I don't right. know. It's just, I, clouds are awesome. You can just see all kinds of cool things through clouds. And then Beth made a comment on the previous um, uh, picture. She says, this looks, oh my, so familiar. Thank you for capturing the mood perfectly. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. All and right. so this, this is, one. This one is one of my favorites. Um, this is called First Light. And it's like pre dawn or it, pre sunrise. Um, my family and I, we used to go camping down at Galveston all the time. And we would kind of get up with the first light and go out on the, the beaches and at the bottom there um it's caught a little bit of glare but it's a, a sand dune oh. kind of in the shades early morning shades um and then a little bit of a, the seagrass on the horizon there but I tried to capture just the just the beginning of light as it uh, was before the sun came up and I really I enjoy painting this one well, I can definitely tell with the smile when we got on this this little slide you got all all cheeks I loved it I loved it it is a very pretty painting all right this one is called transition and just looking at it it's it, of course it's a seasonal transition into fall um but you know it can also have a, another meaning a bit, things that are going on in my life too just kind of gradually trying to change and overcome and you know be the best I can be given the circumstances but this is just a peaceful walk through some beautiful um fall trees this one I painted um with um New York in mind I grew up in New York I graduated from high school in New York um, some of my very dear friends are still up in New York, um, and I painted this with um, some of them in mind and, and where I grew up um, out in the country, and um, I just, the trees, I don't know if you've ever been up to the- Oh, yeah. The when she, when she started there. saying that, I was like, wait a minute, why does this look familiar? And me, because it's New York has some of the most beautiful trees when the seasons changed. Right. And I was super curious, like when I walked through, like where this was and I, and I couldn't place it. And I was like, I know I've seen this because uh, I usually go up north um, this time of year to visit friends who live outside of Boston. And then we drive around up north collecting Christmas ornaments. And we spend a lot of time driving through New York and, and just looking at uh, the trees and things. And I was just like, I know this looks so familiar, but I couldn't figure it out. And so thank you for saying that. Now I can put that at ease. 
So, mm -hmm. but that's really cool. That's where you grew up and you still have friends there. That's yeah. awesome. So I didn't mean to interrupt you, sorry. Oh no, that's fine. Um, this um, is probably, I mean, people ask me, which one is your favorite? And this one is probably my all time favorite just because it just brings back um, wonderful memories. You know, just back in the day when, when I was able to get up and go hike through the woods and, and check out the nature and all the little changes that are going on. And I had fun painting, trying to get the depth into this one, you know, where you've got the things that are right up close to you and then where it looks like you're going deeper and deeper back in the background into the woods. So this was a learning experience for me, uh, learning how to do that. Uh, by the way, um, I, I didn't mention when I introduced myself, I am not a formally trained artist. All of this I've kind of learned by trial and error and taught myself. I would s sometimes go on to YouTube and watch tutorials like how to paint palm trees or you know, how to paint ocean waves or something like that. And then I'll try something and, and then try to figure it out. And this one is I, not terribly tall. I think it's maybe 24 inches, but I still, with my little shaky hand, I've only got use of the thumb and these two fingers. Um, if I get up too high, I, I cannot paint the vertical tree. So I had to turn them sideways, the painted trees sideways. So oh I have all my, my little odd little quirky ways of getting my paintings done. Well, it's absolutely beautiful. And Lynn says, I love this one. Oh, thank you. Lynn. Uh, I love it. I love the yellow. I think my, I think the, that's like the prettiest shade of yellow. I don't know if it's because of the contrast with the orange and the greens and I don't know, very pretty. Thank you. Yeah. This one makes it feel like that's the kind of day we're having today because I got chilly today for sure. Right. And then if it had been much colder down here, that the little rain and stuff we've had would have been ice probably. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, this one is called There Came an Early Snow. Mm. Um, and it is also of New York. Um, I lived in a little community called Hubbardsville. Um, it was kind of nestled in between some um, glacial, glacial valleys, hills and um, valleys and things. And one way to get to the main town where I uh, went to school was there was a pass, a, a little farm road that went over the mount, over the hill. Um, kind of a back way to get to town. And that's what this uh, inspired this um, painting. Um, and sometimes um, we would get snows that would stick on the ground as early, like the end of October. Oh, so wow. that's kind of when I was picturing this. Um, and so the, some of the leaves were still on the trees and still had the color in them. Of course, there's a lot of evergreen trees up there too. Yeah. So that's what this, and this one is another one I started and didn't finish, but this, this one didn't get wait quite as long. It was about four or five years. <laughs> I pulled it out and it has, it took me, this is probably my largest painting. Well, one of the largest, yeah. but it took me almost two years to get it done because oh, wow. I could only paint, you know, just little tiny paint strokes at a time. I mean, there's some people that are blessed and so talented. I mean, they can put out beautiful artwork in a day or some people I've watched, it looks like they're just doing it in an hour or two. And this one is very, for me, it's very time consuming. Um, I usually use pretty small paint brushes and the details, there's just minute little details on here. And it took me almost two years to get this one finished. But um, it's, I think it, it finally turned out really well. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And I, your daughter made a comment and said, this is one of my all-time favorites. Oh, 
Yeah. Thanks, so. So. Yeah. So I, um, I agree with her. I just, it's absolutely a gorgeous painting. And I love how you really capture the details of the trees. And then you also have, not only are you following a path with that fence, but if you look beyond that fence, you've got another path going beyond that. So um, just, and the colors for that time of year, are just absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. She really nailed the yellows again on that middle. Yes, tree she did. I thought that was just phenomenal. Yeah, I think yellow must be your color. That must be like your cheerful color. Yeah, my little warm warm up color. Yeah, I like that. I like that. And Stephen, we're going to talk a little bit about about you and about who you are and why you decided to do a, a documentary. And um, so for those who don't know who you are, can you give us a little bit of a background and, and how you got started? Absolutely. Um, so I'm a writer. Uh, I got my PhD in creative writing in Scotland. Wow. Uh, finished that several years ago. And that was um, the bulk of the time that I spent writing my book from the land of Genesis, which was published uh, actually just a few weeks ago. But after graduating from my PhD, I hopped on a sailboat and cast off from Pensacola, Florida for Cape Horn, which is the bottom of South America. And that was what we touched on earlier, the um, veteran suicide awareness campaign that we began, which has since morphed into a feature length documentary, which is gonna be called Heller High Seas. Um, and when I returned from that, uh, my, well, my relationship to Kathina is that she is my mother-in-law and I'm <laughs> incredibly blessed and lucky to have her as a mother-in-law. Um, but I was also so just blown away and moved by her story and her passion for painting and creating art um, as a kind of form of therapy and a sign of, you know, perseverance in her life. Um, so whenever I returned from my sailing expedition, my wife showed me, you know, Kathina's uh, basically her studio, her art studio, where she does all her paintings. And I asked if they had any other paintings that she had completed. Um, and so they led me into her bedroom where they had just rows of canvases that were stacked like books on a bookshelf. Wow. Um, and they would just pull them out one at a time and show them to me and give me brief stories like Kat just did, you know, mm -hmm. with all of those pictures that mm -hmm. we showed everybody. And I was so blown away that I felt compelled to tell this story and to, you know, I think especially since it's painting and it's art, uh, the visual format was a necessity. So while I am a writer, um, I've, you know, learned film and I've dabbled in videography and editing and um, documentary filmmaking now. So I kind of made it my mission to tell Kat's story and to get it out there. And so since then, we've, you know, we've secured this exhibition with the Arts Council, which has been huge. And it's so thrilling to see all of her work on display for a solo exhibition for the first time. I think it's so well deserved uh, and it's incredibly moving. And we're so grateful to the Arts Council for providing that platform. But um, moving forward now, what we've managed to do was kind of film this story of of Kathina, you know, going from being a hobbyist who paints on her spare time for fun and for therapy um, to being a professional artist who has solo exhibitions. Um, that's the documentary in a sense. And one of the things that we did and that we filmed throughout that process was taking Kathina to the beach for the first time in over 20 years since wow. she became paralyzed. And, um, that was something that I wanted to do, not just for the film, but, you know, for Kat as well. And it ended up, you know, it's, it's not easy. We had to, maybe, maybe Kathina can elaborate on some of the logistics of that. <laughs> but um, I remember, I remember when I first proposed the idea to my wife, she kind of just looked at me like, you know, okay, you can try, but. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can visualize this in a, um, at the time it was probably not funny, but now I could, I could say that y'all are probably laughing about this trip and super glad you did it. You know, I could, yeah, yeah absolutely. I don't, 
but my gosh, that is just, just crazy. And we're super glad you guys are here because you've got, both of y'all have incredible stories to share. And that's one of the things that I love about art is because it can share so much and it also connects people. It's they're, they're great bridges. They tell stories. And, um, and if you hang around long enough, you will, um, you'll see some amazing things that I don't think you would ever see if you didn't know about art. Even I know this is just like the first part of that. What we're seeing, you're actually adding to this documentary. Um, can you give us an insight of what what all you're doing past this? Sure. I mean, so really, the the short documentary that we're making it was building up to this moment of uh, Kathina's artwork being released and exhibited at the Arts Council. So uh, we had my director of photography, um, Will Walker came and filmed Kathina and Valerie setting up the exhibition and got some really powerful and impactful moments of K Kathina just, you know, moving around the space and uh, seeing her artwork on the walls for the first time. Um, and so now we are entering into the final phase of documentary filmmaking and that's post-production. Uh, so there's a lot that goes into that. There's film editing, but there's also music composition, there's color correction, and then there's finding, you know, the ideal distributor to showcase this piece. And we're looking to make it around, you know, 30 minutes or so, so that it can really uh, be aired and uh, be viewed by as many people as possible. And that's the ultimate goal, you know, is to get Kathina's story out there and uh, to let people know how incredible her journey has been and what a magnificent woman she truly is and how she shines light on everybody that comes in contact with her. Oh, that's very beautiful. I think you made her speechless. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I agree. I think it's quite, quite the story. And I think that is what is so unique about um, art is because it can tell a story and no matter where you are in that story, you can touch someone else and um, they can see something that you probably didn't even know that your story has done. So I, um, I applaud you guys. Super, super thrilled. Um, we're going to end by going through a few things that are happening at the Arts Council, and then we'll bring it back to you guys to finish it out. So like the end was talking about um, how we are collecting some amazing things uh, for our Empty Bowls Junior. We uh, help the local schools with supplying food for their needs. And we're also helping Arts in the Street who put together art packages to hand out to uh, those who are homeless and veterans to help their creativity. And this is just great projects to be a part of if you want to contribute. And here's our little boxes that are in uh, the foyer with the exhibit of Art from the Street. Um, and then also what's happening around the Brazos Valley is we have the picture perfect Christmas picture. There are several businesses around town that have done some amazing decorating and you must stop by and take a family photo and then upload it so we can see how you're spending your holiday season. Can't wait to see those. And then plus, we are having a holiday open house on December 12th from 1 to 4. This is a Saturday. And this is a perfect time to come see Kathina's and Stephen's work here at the gallery along with um, Art from the Street. And this exhibit will be here from, well, it's going on now till January 16th. And we also have something going on. Uh, we had a Tumblr contest and we announced the winner. And we are doing this to raise money for the Arts Council. And you can purchase this Tumblr. Just go to our website at acbv.org and check out all the details on that. And we, you also, with that Tumblr, get a free drink ticket for our Boots and Barbecue fundraiser that's happening March 27th to 2021. Man, 2020 is almost done. I'm, I'm super thrilled about that. And Kathina and Steven's 
uh, exhibit will be here until February 20th of 2021. Um, just an amazing exhibit that you guys have got to come out and see. And I'm going to put it on this last slide so that way if you guys have any questions that y'all need us to help answer, feel free to reach out to us through our website or email or call in. Uh, Stephen, Kathina, do y'all have anything that you guys would like to share before we call it a night? Um, I just want to say thank you for every, uh, to everyone that was that tuned in and um, went through this with us. And I want to encourage um, everyone that is maybe struggling with some difficulties in their lives to um, keep persevering and try to find some ways to be productive in your life and to contribute and give back and just take one day at a time, one step at a time, and you're going to make it. I just want to encourage everybody to, to just um, keep persevering, keep trying. Love that. And I just want to thank both of y'all and the Arts Council for hosting this and for providing this platform. It means the world to us. And I'm super thankful for your wife and your daughter for keeping us all in line. <laughs> yeah exactly she she did a fantastic job of of displaying the 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 paintings in a perfect order you know when you walk into um the gallery you can tell that they are met where they're supposed to be hung and some of these i guarantee you are meant to go home with uh you guys so feel free to come in and and, and purchase uh, some of these paintings and, and take them home to go on your wall because they are absolutely amazing pictures and you will absolutely love having these paintings in your wall and in your home to bring that cheerful, cheerful look and uh, oh my gosh, absolutely amazing. Well, thank you both so much for joining me tonight and let's do this again because I think you guys have more to share and it's been a great time learning more about you guys, and I'm, I know that there are tons of other people that need to hear your story.